먼저 첫 번째 순서입니다. 오늘 첫 번째 순서는 댄 슈나이더. 댄 슈나이더 미국 보수연합 사무총장께서 2020년 사이로 한국 총선 분석이라는 제목으로 말씀을 해 주시겠습니다. 댄 슈나이더는 5년 전에 미국 보수연합 ACU의 사무총장으로 취임한 이후 ACU의 핵심 멤버로서 활동하고 있습니다. 캔자스 대학교 경제학을 전공했고 중국어를 부전공으로 해서 학사학위를 받은 그는 명문인 컬럼비아 대학 법대를 졸업한 다음에 뉴욕에서 변호사로 활동했고 그후 워싱턴에서 정책 경력을, 경력을 쌓았습니다. 캔자스주 하원의원이었던 짐 류네 비서실장으로 정치 경력에 첫 발을 내디뎠습니다. 조지 W. 부시 행정부 시절 밀레인 엘 차오 전 노동부 장관의 백악관 연락관 또 보건복지부 차관의 비서관으로서 직책을 맡아 보수주의 정치인으로서의 행보를 계속했습니다. 댄 슈나이더는 미국 보수주의 연합의 플래그십 행사이자 CPEC으로 널리 알려진 보수주의 정치 행동 회의를 재정립하는 데 크게 기여했고 이에 더해서 미국 내 10여 개의 주와 여러 국가에서 CPEC을 개최할 수 있는 CPEC 365를 기획하고 실시하는 등 보수주의 가치의 중요성을 다시 일깨우는 중추적인 역할을 하고 있습니다. 마이크를 워싱턴에 있는 댄 스나이더에게 넘깁니다. Mr. Min, thank you so much for allowing me to present here today. It is my honor on behalf of the American Conservative Union and CPAC uh, to discuss election fraud and the erosion of democracy globally and the role of the U.S. in shoring up democracy around the world. But before I begin, I do want to thank so much KCPAC and the New Institute for making this possible. Their leadership is very, very important. And most importantly, I want to thank the patriots of South Korea, the patriots who continue to fight for freedom. And those patriots, those people in attendance, and the patriots of South Korea who are watching, you are patriots for freedom around the world. I thank you. On the topic of election fraud in South Korea during the general election of April 15th, sadly, we saw uh, very bad things happen. Uh, but this is not new or unique in South Korea. It is a pattern that, like the coronavirus itself, is creeping into the democratic body throughout the world. A recent U.S. government report identified factors that undermine democracy globally. It found that electoral processes have been undermined more than any other democratic freedom in the last few years. Throughout the world, the basic right to elect leadership is being undermined by it. autocracies as they find ways to control the results, that they keep the illusion of competitive balloting by undermining the very mechanisms of voting machines through big data and collusion with software companies working as fronts with nefarious governments. And of course, I'm specifically referring to the Chinese Communist Party and, the, and corporations that are controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. What is increasingly common around the world are polls where out, the outcome is shaped by coercion, fraud, gerrymandering, and other modes of manipulation. Our right to elect our own representatives is one of the key ways that people in democracies exp express themselves politically. Many see voting as a moral duty, and in some countries like Australia, it is the law. It is a way to protect ourselves and our fellow citizens from authoritarian. We believe when we vote, that we as individuals make a difference. But when what happens when our individual vote has little instrumental value because they are undermined by larger processes aimed at rigged out outcomes, rigging elections is inherently undemocratic. Of course, the U.S. is not immune from these attacks on representational democracy. Shockingly, the U.S. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, has implemented a proxy voting scheme so that she can control how every member of her own party votes on bills in Congress. The Chamber, of, Com uh, the Chamber of, Con of the Congress that is supposed to be the People's House has become the Pelosi House. Similarly disturbing 
the governor of New Jersey has just ordered that mail-in ballots be sent to every voter in his state, even though they have not requested those ballots. But there is nothing to prevent these same voters, after they have already cast a mail-in ballot, from also going to a voting location on election day to cast another ballot. If this is allowed to stand, I promise you that more ballots will be cast than the total number of eligible voters in that state. This is also very anti-democratic. This has been a case globally for the last few years. The military and other security forces influenced key Asian elections and carried out gross rights violations against minorities. In Cambodia, the military, military police, and police openly campaigned for the ruling party. That party won all the seats in the legislative branch. Pakistan's elections were competitive, but the military's influence over the courts and the media was widely, widely thought to have tilted the outcome in favor of Imran Khan, who took office as prime minister. In Myanmar, the military is accused by UN investigators of committing genocide against the Rohingya people, over 700,000 of whom have fled to Bangladesh since the start of violence in 2017. And of course, in China, it is estimated that over 1 million ethnic Uyghurs, Kazakhs, and Hui have been forced into re-education centers. We are seeing more and more reports of the rights violations emerging from within these camps. Meanwhile, Communist Party leader Xi Jinping secured a potential life tenure when the National People's Congress rubber-stamped a decision to remove the Constitution's two-year limit on the presidency. And similarly in Russia, a referendum passed allowed Putin to remain in power as president until at least 2036, but of course, that will go on forever. In South Africa, uh, rather in South America, uh, the Venezuelan president, Nicolas Maduro, extended his authoritarian rule with a profound flawed presidential election. And in Nicaragua, President Daniel Ortega pursued a ferocious crackdown on nationwide anti-governmental protest movements. So what we see in South Korea in the April 15th general election should not come as a big surprise. However, it still does become uh, a surprise to me because we associate South Korea with democracy and the rule of law. Since South, since South Korea emerged from authoritarian rule in 1987 up to the present, we have witnessed a robust democracy and compounding economic growth. Citizens who engage their civil rights to protest and demand the leadership that represents them instead have seen their rights abused and their voting uh, disregarded. Around the world, global freedom has diminished over the last 15 years. We have seen global freedom backsliding among new democracies compounded by the erosion of political rights and civil liberties among established democracies such as South Korea and the United States. Just as we in America have called out foreign leaders for undermining democratic norms in their countries, we must draw attention to the same sorts of warning signs in the United States and in allied countries. Let us admit that the U.S. has an uh, irreplaceable role as a champion of global freedoms as it is uh, a priority for us. And I want to comment that we do have KT McFarlane and Fred uh, Flights here who have played very senior roles in this administration and who have done amazing work in this regard. But the difficulties facing democracy in the United States did not begin with the inauguration of President Trump. The health of U.S. democracy has been undermined since well before that. We saw an intensified political polarization and a weaponization of our government against its political opponents. Uh, this was during the Obama administration when his Department of Justice uh, spied on the Trump campaign. Uh, initially, the accusation was that uh, President Trump was colluding with the Russians. Of course, that proved not to be true. Instead, the only campaign that was colluding with the Russians was the Hillary Clinton campaign. Uh, and her campaign actually paid Russian operatives to, to draft a fake dossier to, uh, and created uh, fantastic kinds of accusations. Um, but the American system of government and democracy is robust. But that is not so everywhere. 
In Venezuela and Turkey, human rights agencies have reported that the democratic institutions gradually succumbed to sustained pressure from an anti-democratic leadership. We are seeing a deterioration in democracy around the world. Um, for over four years, the left in America uh, has successfully taken up so much of President Trump's time in these baseless accusations. And it reminds me of something that Ronald Reagan taught us. And I read his quote directly. As we renew ourselves here in our own land, we will be seen as having greater strength throughout the world. We will again be the exemplar of freedom and a beacon of hope for those who do not now have freedom. Nearly four decades later, the idea that the United States is, a, is, is an exemplar is being steadily discredited. If we are to assess democracy, we must assess corruption and transparency. Those in the Obama administration who attacked uh, candidate Trump and the president and President Trump himself, they need to be held to account. In the, in the case of the United States and South Korea, we see much corruption and little transparency. So what did happen in Korea on April 15, 2020? We saw officials use their position to enrich themselves and their political party. They tolerated conflicts of interest to sow public doubts about their own motivation. The result of this is that citizens lose faith in the system and begin to avoid their own responsibilities, including, pay, including paying taxes, participating in elections, and obeying the law in general. To avoid such decay, it is imperative that government and citizens alike uphold ethical rules and norms against corruption. The United States benefits from a number of strong protections, including independent courts, congressional oversight, and active monitoring by the media and civil society. But it takes patriots like those in attendance here to hold everybody account accountable. I pray that the patriots of South Korea will help us uh, as we defend freedom and democracy uh, around the world. As the Korean election is, is, it comes into greater and greater doubt, I fear that it could be a harbinger of additional failures around the entire globe. Uh, with that, I want to thank you all again for including me, and it is an honor to be included among such uh, great speakers. Thank you very much.